And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Hello, I'm National Weather Service meteorologist Peter Chan with your Alaska aviation weather outlook that'll take us through midweek, Wednesday, and on Thursday. The most notable uh, features we're going to be dealing with coming up here through the midweek period will be uh, low pressure coming out of the North Pacific up into the central and then North Central Gulf by the time we get into Thursday morning. Warm front out ahead of the system, increasingly milder air will be brought in, especially into the panhandle northeast Gulf Coast. Uh, heavy amounts of rain and snow with snow levels rising as that warmer air uh, spreads further northward. Meanwhile, we have very cold temperatures continuing across the Arctic coast, north slope areas with morning lows in the 30s and even still some 40s below zero with bitter cold wind chills. Uh, areas also breezy along the southwest coast, but at least VFR conditions are anticipated across much of the Yukon Valley and especially west side of the state. By Wednesday afternoon though, we have widespread IFR conditions as heavier uh, rain and snow overspreads the panhandle with lowering ceilings, visibilities, some areas of fog also with uh, strong gusty winds along the frontal boundary. And by the time we get into Thursday morning, the IFR conditions expand westward along the Gulf Coast. So we have the whole panhandle IFR, northeastern, north central Gulf Coast, uh, and extending out there through the northern uh, portion uh, of the Gulf. Further west, uh, we find some pockets of uh, MVFR there across the uh, middle upper Yukon Valley, and then IFR conditions way out there toward uh, the western Aleutians. And for Thursday afternoon, uh, we're going to start to see some of that moisture work its way inland. Uh, so IFR conditions expanding uh, northward across the Copper River Basin, uh, on up into the 40 mile gold country along the Alcan border. Still areas of IFR lingering, southern panhandle, northeastern Gulf Coast. So looking at um, past conditions, Anatovic Pass, we'll see MVFR conditions Wednesday morning give way to VFR conditions. Same thing, Attigan Pass. Early on, MVFR conditions becoming VFR. Lake Clark and Merrill should generally hold on to MVFR conditions during the day Wednesday. And as we uh, head up toward the Central Alaska Range, Rainy Pass, MVFR. Windy Pass, MVFR could briefly uh, become uh, VFR in the afternoon. It's kind of a split close call as there's going to be some moisture linger in that area. Uh, Isabel, MVFR also becoming VFR uh, by afternoon. And then further uh, to the east, we'll expect MVFR conditions, uh, Mentasta Pass becoming VFR uh, for the afternoon. And then Tanita Pass, MVFR becoming VFR as well there as we go across the Copper River Basin. And right now it's looking like Portage will hang on to MVFR conditions throughout the pass during the day on Wednesday. Further east though, as the precipitation works its way northward, as ceilings lower, with falling visibilities, we expect uh, Chilkoot and White to become IFR, certainly by afternoon and uh, for Wednesday night into Thursday. So the freezing levels on Wednesday morning, notice they, they bump upward aloft to four, six, eight thousand feet because we have that low lifting northward into the central gulf. Uh, for Wednesday night and then into the north central Gulf by Thursday morning. So that warmer air is going to overspread the panhandle from south to north. Uh, initially, the surface freezing line early Wednesday morning, inner channels of the panhandle along the Gulf Coast, uh, extending uh, off uh, southeast of the Alaska Peninsula because of the cold uh, north northwesterly flow that's been across this region uh, early in the week. And then the greatest threat of icing uh, for Wednesday will be here across the panhandle as that moderate to heavy precipitation expands northward throughout the day and uh, the freezing levels uh, could be above uh, 6,000 or at least the icing levels in the thicker uh, precipitation producing clouds uh, above 6,000 feet here through the lower panhandle. Also there could be some pockets of isolated uh, moderate uh, icing there along the uh, east central interior along the Elkan border above 1,000 feet. Uh, jet stream Wednesday, we have an anticyclonically curved jet core, uh, oh, well over 100 knots, uh, extending down uh, southwest of the Gulf as high as 140 knots. And uh, at 9,000 feet, we still see uh, southwest flow coming into the Gulf with the uh, core of stronger mid-level winds there, uh, south of the Gulf, upwards of 60 and 70 knots. Behind me, we have a frontal system approaching uh, the western Aleutians, and then as we bring it down 
We see a better core of winds, strong winds moving into the western Aleutians, 3,000 feet. Uh, it could be in excess of 50 knots there westward. And then as we look at uh, what's going on here out over the west side of the state, northeast north flow continues uh, 25 to as high as 35 knots there, uh, at least uh, in the lower levels of the atmosphere. And then here, here comes that uh, flow of uh, southwesterly moist flow coming into the panhandle uh, 40 to locally as high as 50 knots there definitely will be some turbulence with that approaching frontal system on wednesday surface to 6,000 feet especially over the southern panhandle that will likely expand northwestward as we go into wednesday night and thursday areas of the alaska range could see some enhanced moderate turbulence uh, some downslope winds especially on the north slide side of the alaska range and then out here to the west, there are some isolated areas of moderate turbulence along the west coast, St. Lawrence Island down through St. Paul, in through the central Aleutians, and I'd even throw in way out here towards Shimia at two. Those areas could be uh, seeing increasing threat of moderate turbulence as that frontal system approaches then, uh, especially Wednesday into Thursday.